Hey guys, and you're welcome to Check My Guns. My name is Carl, and today we will look at this extraordinary submachine gun from Czechoslovakia. Or maybe two of them. Let's check it out. As usual, let's start with a history. After the Second World War in the year 1946, the Czech military was looking for a new submachine gun because the submachine gun concept proven itself during the Second World War. So they basically made this competition and invited Zbrojovka Brno and CZ to compete against each other. Surprisingly enough, one of the requirements from the military was that the submachine gun should be chambered in 9mm, 9x19, which is surprising because after the Second World War, uh, already in the year 1945, the Czechoslovakia agreed with the Soviet Union on the unification of the calibers. So they wanted submachine gun in 9x19, but also they said that it's possible that it's going to be redesigned into 7.62x25 Tokarev. Another requirement was really interesting also. It was a vaguely phrased in a way that the shape of the submachine gun shouldn't interfere with obstacles and uh, soldiers should be able to go through the bushes and woods and be able to shoot from any kind of position. So also laying down to be able to crawl with, with the submachine gun. So it was vaguely phrased like that. So each company took a different approach. If you look at the prototype that was brought by Zbrojovka Brno, Brno Farms company, the ZB47, it's really weird. Look at that shape, it has, it has a magazine under the angle, it's really cool and weird at the same time. Well, CZ came up with two prototypes. Basically, the first was marked 47-1 and that was just adjusted VZ38 machine pistol. Machine pistol, that was before the Second World War, so there was no term of submachine gun, so they just called it machine pistol, or machine gun pistol. Uh, so that was just adjusted VZ38 machine pistol for 9x19 uh, caliber, and it had also bump, bump safety. We'll look at that also in a moment here. And the second prototype was the 47-2, which is basically what we have here. Later on, it was renamed to CZ247. The first prototype, 47-1, was also called CZ147. Later on, it was also decided to change the caliber or try to change the caliber for 7.62 by 25 Tokarev. And that model is called, was called the CZ347. The prototypes were actually also called the Turnable. Why? Well, you remember the requirement from the military about uh, being able to shoot from any position, going through the bushes without getting in trouble because of the shape of the submachine gun? Well, look at that! This doesn't really look like they solved the problem, right? Well, there were two gun designers working on it, Rudolf Latsina and Jaroslav Holecek. And Jaroslav Holecek came up with an idea he actually saw on Stanmark 2 that you can change the position of the magwell uh, on Stanmark 2. So he went even further. And here you can change the position while shooting. So it turns everything. It, <laughs> the whole gun is actually rotating with a bolt and everything inside. So you can shoot in any position. You can go like this. And when you lay down on the ground, for example, you can go like that, which is really, really cool. And you can fire in any position in between, actually. So you can run around and <laughs> turn it like you want, which is really cool. And we will look at that in a moment. So what happened next? Well, these submachine guns were going through the military trials with Czechoslovakian military and all the testing went actually pretty well. Uh, they were still looking at the ZB47 and also these, these uh, CZ247s. But what happened was that new prototypes came uh, from the Brno and also from CZ. From the Brno it was the ZK476 made by Kotsky Brothers and from CZ it was the CZ447. And both of these prototypes were using actually at that time very progressive design with the magazine in 
in the grip, uh, also with a different style of, of the bolt around the barrel, which makes the whole submachine gun way shorter. So military, Czech military actually went this way and these submachine guns become at that point kind of obsolete. So at the end, the CZ447 was accepted by Czechoslovakian military and renamed to VZ48 and later on renamed again to SA23, 24, 25, 26, depending on caliber and, and also stock. So what do you do after you design a submachine gun, which is pretty easy to manufacture and the Czechoslovakian military decides to go for a different one? Well, you start offering it around the world. And the main customer who was really interested at that time was Egypt, actually. Because Egypt was preparing for the war against the Israel. They ordered 10,600 of these submachine guns. And CZ started manufacturing those and preparing for shipment and everything. But at that time, Czechoslovakia decides to support Israel instead. So they decided to cancel all these contracts and now end up with 10,000 submachine guns in stock. So what do you do with those? Well, try to offer them around the world, but it was kind of hard with the communists in power because they wanted to uh, supply only their allies, obviously. So some bits and pieces were sold around the world. There were 250 pieces uh, sold to Bolivia in 1949. The, some of them were changed to, uh, for training purposes in Czechoslovakia to fire blanks. Most of them were actually sold to Nigeria in 1967 and the rest of it what was left was sold to Ethiopia in the year 1977 so these are kind of around the world but they are still really rare uh, the final number how many were made was 10,813 pieces so I think it's about time to have a closer look on these submachine guns let's look how the magic works with turning the mag to different positions. You don't turn really the magazine itself, you turn actually the whole gun. So you press this button here on the bottom and you can turn it around and you see that basically everything is turning. So the bolt, cocking handle, whole body is turning around. It's attached in this sleeve. This is the part that doesn't turn with iron sights on it, which is obvious reason because you need them to be fixed in one position. So when you turn, this thing doesn't turn. So where this is the one place where the, the whole gun is attached or the rotating part, basically the whole gun is attached. And the second one is here in the back. This is the, this is the button. We will look at that when we disassemble it. This is the end of the recoil spring, which holds it in a place. Starting from the rear here, we see that this wooden stock has a metal butt plate attached with two screws. Here's the cutout with a wire, uh, which works as a sling swivel. And here on the other side, we have this very clever device. This is way how you can load your magazines with a stripper clip. So you just put here a stripper clip with nine millimeter rounds and you press the magazine against it and it will load your mag and the stri stripper clip will be pushed away from, from this feeding device. That's pretty cool that every gun had it in its stock. That's very clever and you can see that also on the series of submachine guns SA-23, 24, 25, 26. Here we have sights actually and they that can be set into two positions. So obviously lower and higher position for longer distances, but there is no designation if it's 100 meters, 300 meters, it doesn't really say. So yeah, this is a really easy device and it's actually pretty hard to to see because it's just too close you cannot really focus on that so yeah nobody really cared that much about accurate shooting with this kind of submachine gun looking at the trigger and trigger guard pretty simple there's basically nothing it's just basic basic metal uh, with a trigger and that's it if we look at the markings here we see Česká zbrojovka Národní podnik Strakonice so basically CZ company, national company in Strakonice 
and here we see the designation VZ47. So at that time it wasn't called the CZ247 but it was supposed to be adopted by Czechoslovakian military under the name of VZ47. It's one of many names at that time. Uh, <laughs> the same thing was named like three times. So yeah, don't be confused by that. And here we have the serial number 28. What else do we see here? Uh, this is actually way how you disassemble it. We will look at that in a moment. Uh, here we have a charging handle. This charging handle is actually quite extraordinary. Usually it was it was a rounded uh, rounded handle. We will, I will show it to you on, on the other one we have here. And that also works as automatic bump bump safety. So when you grab the handle, it lowers this part down so you can you can charge the gun uh, if you slam with the rifle against hard surface you need to prevent it from charging it itself just by the weight of the of the bolt so this prevents it so unless you grab the charging handle the bolt cannot go in a rear position looking here above the those wings there's this cutout bit so basically that works as a safety <laughs> so we will hold it like this so you cannot really fire and when you're ready to fire you just put it back and fire because of the fact that you can turn this around there, there are no other markings and you basically <laughs> have charging handle now on the left side of the gun and if I turn it again it's basically on the top you have these little metal wings on sides which actually cover the cutout in the body the cutout is there because of of the sear of uh, the trigger because the trigger obviously doesn't move so it needs to be able to uh catch catch the bolt either way so if it's turned this this way or that way so yeah when we disassemble it you will you will see it so yeah here's the button and against that button in this position is the mag release which is here protected by the side side wings out of metal but it happened to me actually that i wanted to turn it and accidentally grab the mag release and the mag fell down on the ground so i started like this and that was unexpected <laughs> yeah that's not a good thing when that happens here we see the ejection port and barrel nut which attaches the barrel to the rest of the body and another sling swivel which freely goes around the barrel and that's basically it let's take a look at the magazine it's just straight uh double stack magazine for nine millimeter it what i read is that it was supposed to hold 40 rounds the marking starts at 10 then there's 20 and there's nothing else so who knows i haven't tried to put a 40 rounds in it but it's it's pretty damn long so i i believe that, that it can hold 40 rounds there's one more proving mark i didn't notice at the beginning and that's the check proving mark check lion over here other than that there is nothing else on the gun no markings at all and here we have the CZ347. So it's basically the same thing, just made in caliber 762 by 25 Tokarev. And this is one of the differences that this round charging handle, instead of the sticking one, just plain, plain stick <laughs> so the rounded one is way more common with common with cz247 and other than that there is obviously different marking on it cz uh česká zbrojovka národní podnik strakonice but this time it's a vz48 and marking serial number 04 there is a one more difference and that's the way how you take out the magazine because obviously the magazine is different for the different caliber and it was actually a rounded shape i can show a picture 
well you released it with the button instead of the lever here on the bottom so that's another different thing other than that it works just the same way all right so now it's time to disassemble this gun so first thing you do is that you grab this sticking out piece which pushes the recoil spring inside and now you can easily just pop it out what we see inside is the trigger the trigger works really really interesting uh, in an interesting way that if you press it just halfway you just go for semi-automatic function but if you press all the way it goes down and you are on fully auto so you don't really have a selector here you just all do everything with a trigger if you press it like this you go semi and here if you hold it you go full auto which is pretty cool here we have the wings that actually protects if i turn it protects uh dirt from or or the inside of the gun from getting any dirt inside when you turn it around and this is the space that fits here on the sear of the trigger so if i continue with the assembly here's the cover so yeah take that out take out the recoil spring and now the bolt and that's basically it so you see this is where the where the trigger holds on the bolt and it's all around so you can fire from any position between these these two uh, positions of 90 degrees so if I put that here that lies in here and it's blocked by by the sear of the trigger in any way you turn it which is really cool and yeah charging handle with the bump safety and here is the fixed firing pin because yeah this fires from the open bolt position so yeah that's basically it there is nothing else to it you can still rotate it in the sleeve so yeah pretty damn nice and simple an obvious comparison if we have both of these calibers here these are the bolts so this is the 762 this is a 9 mm one and they look quite different right yeah longer longer cartridge so it needs to be redesigned but other than that still a similar thing so let's put it back together Now it comes really handy that you can hold it like this and you put the cover back in turn it and it's secured pops back in and you're ready to fire there's one more thing that is different between the VZ47 and 48 and that's the loading device obviously because it's the different caliber so it had to be changed but yeah it's present on both of these all right so we are ready to test fire this submachine gun I loaded the mag so now the most important question is do you play second world war games as a German or as a Brit well I'll start with this position and we will see so of course open bolt and let's try it out Woo! there that worked really well let's try a stand grip it's pretty cool <laughs> and it works really nice well now let's make it loose a bit more some position 
in the middle. It works! This is amazing. Well, I'm empty. Let's, let's put another mag through. All right, so we filled another mag, but this time we'll go in slow motion. So guys, before that, I hope you really liked the video. And if you did, press like and subscribe. And also check out my other social media like Instagram and Facebook. And if you really, really liked the video, you may consider tossing me a coin because I finally have a Patreon. Well, without further ado, let's go.